almost uh -huh. coming up on midway in that cycle. Then it's going to rupture when it's a mature follicle. It's going to rupture, now giving you that secondary oocyte and the corpus hemorrhagicum. Here, you can see that you have this luteinizing hormone coming in there, taking that mature follicle, getting it ready so once it gets rid of that secondary oocyte, it's not going to degenerate like we talked about. It's going to actually form a special structure called the corpus luteum that's going to be a hormone-producing entity itself. It's going to produce progesterone and estrogens. Now, once you have that egg cell ovulate, here we are, day 15 to 17, somewhere in here, and now you have about 10 days that the corpus luteum is going to be functional, producing progesterone and estrogen to maintain and develop the uterine lining, so it's going to be at its maximum out here towards the end of this. So if you wound up getting this fertilized and you went through all those, remember the different divisions, so it's going through cell divisions after it was a zygote, turn into a morula, then become a blastula, and then finally a gastrula. In plants, somewhere in here, now you have the opportunity for beta HCG to be produced, and then that would stop this. But let's leave that off. If you don't have beta HCG, to, so let's say you had this egg cell, there was no sperm in this situation, then it's going to land on this uterine lining, but then the corpus luteum is going to degenerate into a corpus alicans that does not produce any hormones, no hormones, the uterine lining is dependent on those two hormones to maintain itself, so then it will slough off that little egg that landed on there will sub slough off with the rest of that endometrial lining. So that's what happens in the ovary. Here, when you look at the uterus, as you get these estrogens circulating along, that's going to cause the endometrial lining that you just sloughed off to start proliferating. It's going to start building itself back up. You have this first little area before you ovulate. That's called the preovulatory phase. And then what's happening on the actual lining is you have this proliferative phase. You have this growth of that uterine endometrium. So then you ovulate. You now have this post-ovulatory phase, which is now after ovulation. And now you have what's called the secretory phase in the endometrium. This has got to be very receptive. All these blood vessels are going to come through here and it's ripe to receive an egg to attach onto that. No beta HCG. Once this corpus luteum dies, this endometrium is dependent on having progesterone and estrogen, particularly progesterone. Once that stops and drops off, you then trigger off the next months menstrual cycle and you lose that lining and you lose the egg that ovulated. So that's how you go from one cycle to the next. Starts with the hypothalamus, maintained and run by the anterior pituitary. The ovary will select its um, egg and now that will respond, become a mature follicle, release that secondary oocyte, which is diploid, and then it has an opportunity, it's got that 10 day window there, to get fertilized, go through these cell divisions, and hit that uterine lining. If it doesn't do that, it'll land on there somewhere. The corpus luteum that was maintaining all this to give you the opportunity to do this will die. The endometrium lining will then degenerate, you slough it off, and you're back where you were. Now, if you look at this, this is showing you the concentration of these hormones. So you have FSH getting a little rise there, and then midstream here, you're going to get a little pulse of this. If you take a look at luteinizing hormone, LH, you're going to get a big spike of that. It's the spike in both of these hormones that's going to cause 
that um, that uh, a mature follicle to rupture. That's the triggering event. So then, if you look at it, they all both drop off, but now you have the progesterone in here as you form that corpus luteum. That's now going to start growing and reach its maximum. So if you look at where this is in physical time, you've got this nice endometrium maintained here, and then you have the estrogens that would spike as well. They also have a little elevated uh, rise in here. So that's, you've got to have both of those hormones will maintain that lining. Once they, this structure dies, you no longer have that, they're dropping off, then the endometrial lining sloughs off.